Well, hello, Grant and gang. Snowy, it's cold. Brrr, what happened? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you a story today about why the weather can be so strange at this time of year. This is a story of Beera, the Queen of Winter, and Angus Og, the King of Summer. Once long ago, when the world was still just water, there lived four giant women, and they lived down underneath the waves. They turned a great stone, a great millstone, and from out of this millstone came not flour, but earth, great big solid chunks of earth and stone and rock. They filled up baskets called creels and put them on their backs, and one went to the west, and one went to the east, and one went to the south, and the biggest and most terrible of them all, the Kaliach, Bira, she went to the north. And there she took the great pieces of earth and rock and stone and she made a land of mountains and valleys and she took her iron hammer and she rode about on her old goat and she smashed the hammer into the rocks and stone and she made the land of Scotland. And then she whirled that hammer above her head once, twice, three, four times and great clouds appeared and then... It began to snow. It began to snow and snow and snow. For days and weeks and months and years it snowed. And everything froze white. And then she made a castle. She made a castle of ice. And then she said, this is good. Into the castle she went. And she looked out over the frozen land. She was delighted. For the people of the land, it was very hard. They had to live in this icy snow, try and find food, try and find shelter, some wood to keep warm, like a fire. One day a poor girl, called Bride, was passing by, and she was shivering, holding the little thin cloak around her. She was looking for firewood when Beera spotted her, and she thought, Ha ha, I will have her as my servant. And so Beera, she leapt down from her castle and she grabbed poor Bride. And she said, you, my girl, will do my bidding. You will work for me now. And so she did. Every day was the same for poor Bride. She had to clean and she had to fetch. She had to polish the ice of the castle walls until it shone and sparkled. But nothing was ever good enough for Beera. No, no, no. Because, you see, Bride was good and kind, and Beera, she had a cold, cold, icy heart. And so, she decided to play a trick on the girl. She called her and gave her a brown ram's fleece, the f wool of a sheep. And she said, take this, go to the Corryvreckan whirlpool in the ocean, and wash this fleece until it is as white as the snow on the mountains. Well, poor bride, she knew that could never happen, but she tried. Off she went, and she took the fleece, and she came to the water, and she saw the whirlpool, and she plunged it in once, twice, three times. And do you think it came out brown? Or do you think it came out white? It came out brown, just the same. But then an old man with a white snowy beard appeared, and he said, I am old father Winter. Now, my dear, what is your problem? Oh, my mistress is, bri is Beera, the queen of winter, said Bride. She will have me wash, wash this fleece until it is as white as snow. Ah, perhaps I can help, said the old man. And he took the fleece and he dipped it into the whirlpool once, twice, three times he plunged it in, he shook it. And it was as white as snow. There, take this to your mistress. Bride, she hurried back with the fleece and showed it to Beera. But Beera was furious. You, my girl, have cheated. You have had help. I know this. That's old Father Winter's work. And so you shall be punished. She took the poor girl on the back of her shaggy grey goat, and she rode through the snow to the very north of Scotland, to the highest mountain, Ben Nevis, and she struck the side of the mountain with her hammer, and woomph, a cave opened up, and she threw Bride in. 
The cave shut with a slam and a smack and a crack. And poor Bride was left in the darkness, in a cold, icy prison. And Beera rode back to her castle, laughing as she went. Now away across the sea, on the island of summer, in the land of Tyrn and Nog, that floats on the waves, where it is always summer, there, the land of forever young, lay the Prince of Summer himself, Angus Og. He was sleeping under a tree in a meadow of flowers, when he thought, Ah, he saw a girl, a woman, in a darkened cave. And he thought, she is the one true love of my life. And he leapt up from his sleep. And he ran to his father, the King of Summer, and said, Father, I will cross the waves to the land of Scotland, and I will rescue Bride from her prison. Ah, you cannot go, my boy, said the old king. Tis the wolf month of February, and all is frozen and icy and cold. Wait until the summer. I cannot wait said Angus. This I cannot wait for. And so, using his magic, he took three days from the month of summer and he put them into the month of February. And then he rode on his horse across the waves with the fish swimming below him and the dolphins jumping in front of him and the birds of the sea circling above him. And he came to the icy shore of Scotland. His horse thundered up onto the rocks of the shore, and where its hoofs struck the ground, the snow and ice melted, and then grass, green grass, began to grow up, and flowers began to open, and birds began to sing, and leaves came to the trees for the first time ever. And he rode across the land like this, bringing summer with him. Up to the very north he went, to the great mountain of Ben Nevis, and there he took a hazel branch, and he struck the side of the mountain, and the cave opened up, and into the glorious warm sunshine stepped Bride. Bride looked at Angus, and Angus looked at Bride, and immediately, well, they were in love, and so they went down into a beautiful sunny glen, and there they were married by the queen of the fairies herself. Well, they rode on the horse back to the land of Tyrn and Og, and there they ruled as the king and queen of summer. But in her icy castle, Beera, queen of winter, awoke to a drip, drip, drip. The walls were melting. The ceiling was melting. Everything was melting. She ran to the window. She looked out. There, everything was green, filled with colour. The sky was blue. The sun shone down. She was furious. She took her iron hammer. She leapt on to her old goat. And she rode across the land, swirling the hammer above her head, bringing the snow down in torrents. She struck the ground, and where she struck the ground, it turned to ice and snow. And when her work was done and winter was back, she threw the hammer under a holly bush. And people say that nothing will ever grow under a holly bush now, because that is where Beera's hammer came to rest. But Angus Og. In the land of Tirnanog, he felt the cold wind come from Scotland. Then he knew Beera had risen once more. And so he leapt into the air. Through the air he flew. And as he neared Scotland, he took sunbeams and he put them to his bow and he pulled back and he began to fire sunbeams through the air. Beera grabbed her hammer and leapt up into the sky as well. And a terrible battle then began. Beera swinging her iron hammer, Angus Og firing beams of sunlight. And this battle raged on. And when Angus would get the upper hand and begin to win, then the clouds would be driven back and the sun would shine down and bring warmth. But when Beera would get the better of Angus, the wind would howl, the skies would darken, and snow and ice and sleet and hail would come in torrents. Now, eventually, Angus defeated Beera, and she went to the land of Tirnanog, where she rested and she drank from the fountain of youth, and she slept and became young and strong again, ready to return once more to claim her icy throne. And then the battle would begin all over again. And so it is every year, at this time of year in February, it's called the Days of Bride, where Angus 
and Bira, they battle in the sky. And that is why sometimes, this time of year, <laughs> we sit here in the snow freezing. <laughs> and sometimes it's beautiful and warm and the first signs of spring come, the snow drops and the grass grows, the skies can be blue. And it changes and changes and changes until summer comes once more and then winter and so on and so on and so on. For this is one story that has no end.